Good morning and welcome into SimWorld today, July 29th, audio only version as we kick off the week for you. Uh, plenty to get to as the Olympics well underway. Uh, some surprising contractual activity in SimWorld uh, BA over the weekend. And plus a little as we continue our SimWorld U preview since we now have a start date. But let's start in France where Team USA uh, takes care of Serbia for the second time. Uh, 110 84. Kevin Durant returns in dominating fashion. B Ron, he comes off the bench to score 23 points on eight of nine shooting, buries all five of his triples. A game that was never really close uh, outside of the early start of it where Serbia took a lead. But Team USA making their mark 1 0 already in group play. Your takeaway from yesterday's game? Well, this is how. It's supposed to look. <laughs> I know I know there were some, you know, concerns from a lot of people, uh, myself included, when they were doing their exhibition games to get ready for the Olympics, you know, playing a close game against, was it North Sudan, South Sudan? One, South. one or two. Yep. S- South, South Sudan, uh, playing a close game against them. Um, numerous, numerous games against, you know, numerous close games against teams that you would think that they should be handily, but it's good to see that guys came out ready to, ready to play. Um, and Kevin Durant, especially, you know, coming off the bench, like you said, and playing like he did, uh, you're not, you're, you're never, you're never going to see that, uh, in the SBA and say, Hey, Hey, Durant, Durant came off the bench today. What? <laughs> so, you know, him coming off the bench and playing like he did is impressive. And I'm sure that had to do with him, you know, working back from the injury and all that stuff. They wanted to get him uh, time off the bench versus in a starter uh, role for that game. Maybe maybe, start, maybe maybe he starts the next game. But I'm glad to see it all worked out for the first game. Hope it keeps up, boys. Bring home that, that gold. That yeah, gold this, in a row. This shouldn't do I, – I don't think this should have been a surprise. I think there was a lot of – um, concern being waved around, but you still look at this USA roster from top to bottom. Was the pressure always going to be on them? Yeah, I'll stand by that. The pressure was always going to be on this team to to need to win. Um, mm-hmm. But to think that this team wasn't going to be dominant uh, across the board, I think is was a little bit of just playing to the competition. Um, yeah, I think that's that, that 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 that's what it is. I think that's where the concern came in for me in particular. But continue. But I, I treat those tune-up games, those exhibition games, were just that, right? They were essentially preseason and or late regular season games when you know what what stands ahead of you and what mm-hmm. you're doing right now just simply doesn't matter. And so they didn't need to go and blow out South Sudan. They didn't need to go and blow out Germany. Um, Germany, who's very good. South Sudan, who just got their first Olympic win, by the way, uh, in in country history. Um, they they just needed to be good, and they needed to make sure that they got into this into the Olympics healthy. And Kevin Durant was the one outlier to that. Um, I thought Joel Embiid did not look great. He played a team low eleven minutes. Um, he got heavily booed by the French fans. I think for good reason. <laughs> I I am still not a huge fan of uh, Embiid being on Team USA. Not because he's not talented. Not because of uh, you know any vendetta against him or something like that. I j- he's just is he American? Yes, he's technically American. Uh, he has his U.S. citizenship, and that is commendable. But I it's. It's a little bit, not nearly the same scale as a Kevin Durant joining up with the Warriors. It's like, man, you could have gone to France. You could have gone to, you know, I can't remember off the mm-hmm. top of my head what um, African country he's he's from as well. But you could have gone to a really talented uh, place and tried to make your mark instead. You're struggling here for Team USA. Um, but the big storyline coming out of is Jason Tatum. I don't, I'm not surprised by this one. Uh, or I'm not, I shouldn't say I'm not surprised. I'm surprised he didn't play. I'm not going to be up in arms about him not playing. That that kind of <laughs> underscores what we've talked about with the Derek White piece, It's yeah. who did play 16 minutes. You need guys that are comfortable not playing because this isn't going to be a 12-man rotation, B-Ron. It's going to be about an eight to right. nine-man rotation. It was about eight and a half last night. It shouldn't have been uh, anybody that's going to step in and demand minutes, and Steve Kerr's already said it was stupid that he didn't play him, and he's going to play against Japan. Yeah, and you know, speaking of age, Marsh, <laughs> the, the older players on the team, the only team USA really kind of proved that, you know, that 
that doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, mm-hmm. LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, they're all combined 110 years old, which is crazy to me. Either one that way. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, all those guys over there, they, they still got it, and they're still playing at a very high level. And w- with this being LeBron's last one, um, I just – I'm very – happy that starting out this way and you know thanks for the reminder earlier that those were you know two note games that kind of stuff because that kind of puts it in perspective when all of the when all of the real games begin if that makes sense i think it's good to be reminded of that in these in these situations but well the last thing i'll say before we move on is that uh there's always every olympic cycle world cup cycle there's always a lot of um concern over the minutes i think that was a big concern this this summer was oh you've got a lot like you said guys that are <laughs> i did not know they add up to age 110 um but you've got guys i mean curry's 36 lebron james is 39 durant's 35 36 something like that um yeah joel, they, joel beats 30 and well, drew holiday they, 34 they also played 27 minutes for lebron james 21 for steph curry 17 for kevin durant 24 for drew holiday Man. They're not, it's not like they're playing 40 minutes a game. Yeah. Um, and you're also not being asked to play the same style of minute as you play in the SWBA. Yes, they're playing yeah. basketball. Yes, they're not home. But for a two-week stretch, uh, call it a month stretch, maybe six weeks most because of training camp and whatnot, they were on the road, not staying at an Airbnb, but probably staying at the best possible accommodations. I don't think we should get as bent out of shape about – guys playing 20 minutes a game for their country during the summer. All right, let's head to Phoenix, where a surprise signing, the Phoenix Suns signed Tyus Jones to a one-year $3.3 million deal. Um, This is an absolute steal of an acquisition uh, by Phoenix. Jones averaged 12 points, 7.3 assists last year for the Washington Wizards. And he heads now to Phoenix, who was needing exactly what he can provide. Tyus Jones has long yeah. been considered the best backup point guard in the league. He's probably going to get a chance now uh, to be starting for the Suns. But this is a coup for the Phoenix Suns, who had no financial flexibility. And they get one of the better point guards on the market, um, not only remaining, but probably for this entire free agent period, one of the top point guards. Yes, there's some there's some reason to think he's got some some uh, room to grow and and proof to be proved, but uh, I I think this is a great signing right now for Phoenix. Yeah, no, I definitely have to agree with you there. Uh, look, it, it, it's uh, the point the point guard in general. Uh, I don't I don't want to say it's a lost art, but I, I don't think that's the case. But you when when you're Phoenix and you've been needing a more traditional point guard sorely, real badly you know, and you finally get one in in the caliber of of Tyus Jones, who for the Wizards, like you said, was really good last season. I do think that that is a huge pickup for your team and it allows you to to just have a better plan coming into the next season for your offense, especially when you still have, you know, uh the other talent around uh Jones, you know, um uh, Devin Booker, Kevin DeBrand, Bradley Beal, they're all still there. So it's good that they're able to make the move. And I hope that Jones can come in and give them what they're what, what they're looking for and play to that level that he did with, with Washington. That would be very nice. The challenge that Phoenix had um, last season and, and not really before because Durant didn't really get to play too much, but was the fact that they could not get into offensive sets they didn't have a playmaker there that could do the things that a normal playmaker point guard does and Tyus Jones does exactly that he's not going to be um demanding to get a ton of shots he's not going to be demanding to get uh the ball in his hands every single possession he's not going to be hunting points for himself he is a playmaker and so that will allow both Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal so all three of them to operate off ball. And that is where all three of them typically are best served. I'm not saying that Booker and KD aren't great isolation guys. They are. Yeah. Um, but the challenge that they had was they were asked to then facilitate for the rest of the group. And that's just not where they, 
that's not their skill set. Those are not right. Yeah, exactly. they were asking Bradley Beal to be the starting point guard, and that's not <laughs> yeah. who Bradley Beal is. No, and so, it's not. And so adding a guy like Tyus Jones, who has been in environments in which he has been needing to be the second fiddle time and time again. I mean, he was in Memphis. He was behind um, behind John Morant. In Minnesota, that team was, was just purely rebuilding, um, and he didn't start much. But he has consistently been a guy that facilitates for others um, every single season that he's been in the league. I mean, you look at since the 2017-18 season in which he played, uh, where you really started to – play a lot of games he's had only one year and it was that first one where he's had less than three assists and only two seasons that one included where he's had less than four assists per game the other was 3.7 in his second year in Memphis he facilitates that's what they need they need a guy who can facilitate for others who can get others involved that was the one weakness of this team and the fact that they're not going to be relying on Monte Morris anymore to be their starting point guard is a absolute win for the Phoenix Suns especially for the value. And it, and it underscores why for some of these role players, getting that money right off the bat before it disappears is massive. And I think that teams can do one of two things. They can go out and they can try to get a guy right away, get maybe mm-hmm. slightly above market value or slightly below market value just to try to see if a player will sign with them early on for a rate they might not sign elsewhere just because they want the money to be there. Or You try to wait it out and you see what happens. And we're already seeing teams being very afraid of that second apron. And that's why Tyus Jones ends up at $3 million. Yeah, exactly. And, and he, and he takes, he takes care of the ball too, Mark, which is even better. Uh, His uh, assisted turnover ratio was 7.35 last season. So he takes care of the ball. It's going to help him a lot too. Go ahead. (laughs) It was 7.3 to one. Yeah. One turnover per game with seven assists last season. All right. Let's head over to, to Sim world. You, we've been kind of bouncing around the, uh, the environment we did a couple of big 10 team big 12 teams rather uh let's head to miami where kavon jackson i continue to be fascinated by this one um the teams are starting to get some open runs in um training camp won't officially begin until about mid to late august depending on the conference but uh mid or some some summer runs are indeed beginning as the sim world u season will begin at the beginning of october the big name kavon jackson um one of the top recruits in sim world prep last season he ends up in miami and the big question mark is is this going to be a bianco fernandez kavan jackson trio in the backcourt and if that's the case uh b run your thoughts if we do see um kavan jackson's pr- traditionally played the guard position uh end up as the small forward the de facto small forward for miami at six foot five so here's the thing on on paper this looks really good. It looks really flashy. Um, and we're all excited about it. And I think that's good. Um, on the other side, on the other side, we always have to, we always have to think about though, you know, between all three of these players, you know, who's going to be the one that's going to be kind of doing the facilitating. You would think that it would be Edgar Fernandez. Um, and like you said, maybe Jackson does end up playing, playing the, uh, the, the three, or, or or Bianco play plays point. It's just a, I I I think that's the only issue that I see with this lineup potentially, is that uh who's gonna be the one that plays the point guard position and has 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 that responsibility of running the offense, setting the plays for the team. Um, Jackson, I do think that he could fit in at either the two or three. Um, but. I, I yeah I, for me that that that's kind of where, where my hang up is right now Marsh is who's going to play point guard and well, how is that going to work for the team I don't I think that's actually the least of their concerns because I think Dominic B, first off they played they won a national championship last year with Bianco and Fernandez in the backcourt and those yes, two guys that's true. That's true. that that answer, that that poses the same question you're asking who's going to be the point guard Edgar Fernandez ended up being the point guard he led the team in assists Dominic Bianco and Jermaine Malcolmborn both averaged more than 20 points per game there was clearly a line that said look we can do this um we are not concerned about that um so adding Kevon Jackson and I think I said this when he signed there was I was I'm very impressed with his or I'm looking forward to seeing how he can operate as an off-ball creator can he 
add mm-hmm. that repertoire to his game? And can he be part of an offensive ecosystem? Because your question and your concern isn't misguided. I mean, the fact that Bianco and Fernandez accomplished it doesn't mean that we should just assume that success is going to right is going to continue with yeah. Kevon Jackson. Um, I think some people are going to get up and say, well, if you have those three at the guard, you're you're super small, right? Six two Bianco, six three Fernandez, Kevon Jackson. Um, we're we're finally going to have as a quick tangent. We're finally going to have legitimate sizes for these sim world U players because sim world prep it's kind of like oh this player says he's this the coach says he's this we're going to have legitimate sizes now because we're going to have players re- or, um, measured by their schools come on jackson measured in a 6 5 2 16 um that's not huge but also it's not tiny and then yeah. lastly, it's sim world you. It's not as if you're going up against teams. They're going to have six foot seven guys, you know, wings across the board like you might at, you know, the SWBA level. Yeah, I think that's the guard of Kevin Durant. Right. Kevon Jackson <laughs> at the at the three at six five, I, I don't think is actually going to be that that detrimental to them. I think this is a great signing for them. I've said that many times. Um, I actually think that's the best way for them to go forward. Bianco, Fernandez, and Jackson. It's just a whirling dervish of an offense. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that um, as we uh, as we get ready and we start to get more leaks and, and info out of open runs. And then, of course, once the season rolls around in a couple months here, uh, I think that trio is going to be absolutely it's going to be if we don't get night one opening night University of Miami on SimWorld TV, uh, the folks at SimWorld uh, hoops who struggled to even get these teams on TV last season, <laughs> it's going to be a loss for everybody. Miami needs I, to be national television night one. I will I hear no arguments otherwise. All right. I that agree. is our show. Um, B-Ron, I appreciate you coming on and joining us yeah. this morning. Uh, we will be back tomorrow morning, Tuesday, to talk probably some Olympics. I'll, I'm going to preview the uh, the Marsh Pod is all Olympics coverage uh, because <laughs> I have been locked in on it. I loved this. This was one of my best weekends because all I did was sit, watch the Olympics, play some college yeah. football 2025 and uh it it was just it was perfect it was perfect be run and were you locked yeah. in on the olympics before we close out here uh honestly no i was in more more into uh, college football 25 i wrote you uh, <laughs> you wrote uh, you yeah uh well get with it get with it because the olympics are rocking they are rolling and uh we'll talk more of that tomorrow be run thanks again for joining us that's our show yep. here on sim world tv the only place you can see the game be the game Mm-hmm.